So we are seeing the background story for this Bhagavad Gita teaching given by Sri Krishna. And in this background story, it is shown that Arjuna, after entering into the battlefield, gets into the problem of the Raga, Shoka and Moha. Raga was there. Raga means attachment. Attachment was there, but it was hidden. It got surfaced on seeing the relatives and with the thought of separation from them. And this attachment led to Shoka, grief. And this attachment and grief led to moha, seeing things upside down. He was seeing dharma as a dharma, doing the duty of Pekshatriya in the form of fighting this war, was dharma for him, but he saw it as a dharma. And running away from the duty is a dharma. He was seeing it as dharma. And not only he saw it wrongly, he gave justification also. He gave so many arguments, mainly two sets of arguments. First one is from personal angle. That, how can I be happy killing my own people? We will not be able to enjoy all the bhogas which we will get after victory. Because we enjoy when our people are there. So from personal angle, it is not worth going for this war. And from social angle, based on Dharma Shastra, also it is not correct. Because this war will destroy so many families, the leaders of families. 
and because of that the destruction of families there will be destruction of family traditions dharmas preserved by certain kula certain families and because of that this adharma will be more powerful dharma will not become a consideration for marriage and other transactions and therefore women will be choosing the partner based on artha and kama only and because of that there will be admixture of the social classes and because of that whatever remaining traditions were there remaining consideration for dharma was there that also will go away people will be given to the life of artha and kama and past generation also will suffer the present generation will suffer because of losing families future generation will suffer because they will not have role models and the past generation also will suffer because they will not get their pinda udaka sarpana shraddha will not be there and therefore arjuna thinks that this war is not good because it has got so many harmful consequences involved and having given all the arguments up to 44th now arjuna is even regretting for coming to the battlefield he said why did we do this he says aho bata mahat papam kartum vyavasita vayam aho alas aho bata both have got the meaning alas oh my god vayam we we pandavas who are supposed to be the protectors of dharma who are supposed to be viveki knowing the this difference between dharma and dharma that type of we pandavas mahat papam kartum vyavasita vyavasita means engaged in what mahat papam kartum in doing great papam and what is great papam great papam of killing our own people killing the leaders of many families which will lead to the overpowering of dharma by adharma which will lead to this varna sankara confusion of this classification of the society which will lead, lead to artha kama based instinctual life no shraddha tarpana no pancha maha yagnas and whole past generation present generation and future generation will suffer and that is why this act is what mahat papam leading to very very harmful consequences and why do you say mahat papam kartum vyavasita vayam yat yasmat because udyataha we are ready swajanam hantum to kill our own people our own relatives and for what rajya sukha lobena out of greed for the comforts of kingdom and for this loba for this greed we are ready to kill our own people and that is a great part here arjuna is showing his nobility in a way that he is considering the well being of relatives more important than his own personal comfort that shows his is is nobility but his nobility in another aspect is veiled by his attachment and what is other aspect the consideration for dharma which is a sign of nobility that is covered covered by what covered by the attachment to the relatives he is forgetting here one point we have seen earlier that there is no comparison between the relatives and personal comfort if that was the choice arjuna choosing the well being or the protection of relatives is a good decision i many people many parents they sacrifice their personal comforts for the sake of children they they don't go abroad they don't go to other place where more uh, facilities and greater salary is there because they want to take care of children their relatives it's a good thing 
when there is a choice between personal achievement or personal comforts and the family well-being person chooses family well-being is a great thing a right thing but here that was not the choice the choice was between the protection of dharma and this protection of relatives and shastra says that tyajet ekam kulasya arthe gramartham kulam tyajet for the well being of family if one person has to sacrifice his or her own interest it should be done it is proper and that one person first it should be me no for the protection or well being of the family one person should sacrifice what is one person some is my brother will sacrifice you know my mother will sacrifice no that first person should be me and for the protection of the village one family can be sacrificed if that is what we do in medical treatment also for the protection of the entire body we allow one part to be cut if required and for the protection of the country the well being of one village is sacrificed when dams are constructed many villages are submerged it is it is understandable and so arjuna has to understand this for the protection of the totality which is represented by dharma for that the relatives well being is to be sacrificed and what all consequences he has talked about they can there can be there to some extent but if this adharmic people are not protect adharmic people are not destroyed there will be greater harmful consequences so sometimes in life we don't have choice between good and better we have a choice between the worst and worse or worse and bad so we have to choose bad is not always good and bad better sometimes something is worse than the other something is bad but other option is worse than the first one therefore we have to go for that it is like saving the body or cutting this one part of the body cutting this one part of the body is not a good thing but this losing the body is worse than that and therefore we go for the lesser of the evil they call it that point arjuna missed that the choice is between the dharma rakshanam and swajana rakshanam is relative protections and because of that he is telling now that how <clears throat> it was wrong thing on our part even to have the decision of killing our own people he is regretting the decision of going for this war and as we saw in the last class regret is a a what is called characteristic of every jiva because the jiva has got doership and as long as doership is there regret will be there you always feel you could have done this way you could have done this way you know at the age of 65 70 also person thinks i should have married that person <laughs> he already your grandfather so but still he, that happens regret remains <laughs> or some people say ji it was good i would not have married him <laughs> he already married what to do we expel even the see swami is no swami ji i was also like you <laughs> <laughs> i also was thinking to be like you i was also having all this but i don't know something happened <laughs> one person was telling swami ji i was going to the ashram regularly then what i started my own ashram what the best ashram <laughs> so and then sometimes they may regret so regret is a constant feature of jiva and that regret can be handled at two levels this is by the way this is not the main topic but this topic has come so i am just sharing one thing regret can be handled at the level of appreciating the order and finally it is handled by seeing oneself to be asanga atma akarta bhukta but initially 
that akarta abhokta may be very difficult for some. So to begin with, see the order. That with a given background, in that situation, I could not do anything different. Anybody in my place, with my background, would have done the same thing. Anybody in my back, in my situation with my background cannot do different. So my decision at that time was understandable. We don't say it was a right decision or wrong decision, we don't say. But at that time that alone can occur to me. And it was in order. The more we see the order in our decisions and actions in the past, more we become free from this sense of guilt. My all decisions, my all actions were in order. Understandable. And so, I am not outside the order. I am in order with all my omissions and commissions. This is the appreciation of Ishvara as the order which helps us to be free from guilt. And then only we can lead healthy life. Guilt cripples the person. Guilt makes the person very weak. In fact, that is why many people use this guilt mechanism. To control people, one mechanism, one device, psychological device is create guilt. So why will tell See, you are not there and children were harassing me so much. Neighbors were doing this. I had to so much. My leg was also paining. Creating a guilt. Therefore what? You take me out for restaurant. <laughs> so, something. so creating a guilt. Husband also will do the same thing. In the office so much work is there. Everybody is firing at me. What to do? And therefore today I will not help you. So, <laughs> so something in your control. Make other person do what I want. Control it. And for that guilt is used. Even in some ashram they use guilt. You should not think anything against Guru. If you think we will go to Naraka. Listen to me. No study. Seva. That's how they do control. We need to know this. Guilt is a mechanism of controlling. So, we need not control others by creating guilt. First of all, we should stop doing that. And we need not be controlled by you know guilt created by others. We say, whatever I could do in that situation was in order, understandable. That's how we become free. First of all, you have to decide you would like to be free. Unless you decide I would like to be free, you cannot be free. But that is how <clears throat> people remain in samsara, they think oh, thoda guilt hona chahiye to. we will be a little bit humble, etc. Humility and guilt are not synonyms. Guilt is something different. Guilt is weakness. Humility is not a weakness. The distinction we need to know. Anyway, so here Arjuna has this guilt and uh, he says, why did we do that? It was a wrong decision that we are ready to kill our own people because of the greed for the comforts of the kingdom. So now Arjuna has decided, I am not going to fight. And somebody might have asked or in his own mind that question might have come that if I do not fight, but Arjuna will fight, uh, Duryodhana will fight because conches are already blown, bugles are already blown. Therefore, war is already declared, started. Gunshot, you know, that has already happened. And therefore, the, officially Duryodhana can attack me. Even though I don't attack, but Duryodhana can attack. And so, Somebody may say, Arjuna, you will, you are very noble hearted, but Duryodhana is not. So you will lose your life if you withdraw from this war. For that, Arjuna gives the answer. 
यदि मतीकारम यदि मतीकारम अशस्त्र शस्त्र पाणय अशस्त्र शस्त्र पाणय धर्तराष्ट्रारणे हन्यु धर्तराष्ट्रारणे हन्यु तन्मे क्षेमतर भवे तन्मे क्षेमतर भवे Arjuna is saying in this shloka that I am not going to fight, and I am going to be without weapons in my hand. And general principle in the war in those days was that somebody when he or she does not he he she was not there he was uh, that time they were not allowing so he is without weapons then. other person should not kill it should be fight between the equals so if somebody is weaponless the one with weapon should not attack so by general rule they should not kill me because i am a shastra means without weapon and apratikar i am the one who is not going to offer any resistance even if they start throwing arrows still i am not going to offer any resistance therefore they should not kill me but because of their greed for rajya even they kill me shastra pranaya yadi if shastra pranaya dhartarashtra dhartarashtra means the children of dhartarashtra kauravas shastra pranaya who are having the weapons in their hand if hanyu hu if they kill ma me what type of me apratikaram yadi if the children of dhritarashtra kill me who are children of dhritarashtra who are having the weapons in their hand they kill me who is without weapons who is without any resistance even i am like this still they kill me rane in the battlefield that that killing that killing of me done by them kshema taram bhavet would be better bhavet means would be kshema taram is better me for me so arjuna is saying even if they kill me i consider it as a good bargain it is a better option than my killing them for kingdom so there are two options either i kill them or they kill me and arjuna thinks that their killing me is better than my killing them because we know dharma and therefore if i kill them i will be losing or i be compromising with dharma which is ahimsa so if i kill them i am compromising with the value of ahimsa which is a parama dharma if they kill me i am not doing any other so from the dharma angle their killing me is kshemataram compared to my killing them and this is what we say between cheating others and being cheated if you have two options either you have to cheat them or they have to cheat you generally samsari people what they will think the person who doesn't have value for dharma he will say what before they cheat me i will cheat them that's what when i come to know they are going to cheat me oh okay i will teach them a lesson and i will cheat them but as a person of dharma he will say the best thing is neither i cheat them nor i get cheated that is the best option first option is that best option neither i cheat them nor i allow myself to be cheated but if there is not the first option is not available only this option either i cheat them or they cheat me 
if that is the situation, then I would like to be cheated rather than cheating others. Because cheating others is papam. Being cheated is not papam. So the people who have value for dharma, adharma, consideration, they will say that cheating others will give me papam. Being cheated is not a papam. So Arjuna says, killing others will involve papam. Whereas being killed, I am not doing any papam. That is what he is thinking. Is. Therefore he says, Kshema Taram Bhavet. My whole Punya account will remain intact. And also it will not, my protection of Punya account will remain intact without incurring any papam of killing my relatives. So therefore what? Kshema Taram. Another reading is that Priya Taram Bhavet. That will be a better option. I would like to go for that. So being killed is okay. Because being killed does not involve violation of dharma in his perception. Whereas killing others involves violation of dharma. And for me, dharma is more important than prana. So if I kill them, my prana may be protected. But if they kill me, my prana is gone, but my dharma is protected. And for me, dharma rakshanam is more important than prana rakshanam. Protection of dharma is more important than protection of prana. Therefore, kshema taram bhavet. It will be a better option. So this shows that Arjuna has, you know, value for at least dharma of his understanding at that time. Readiness to sacrifice. And that is why he got Upadesha. Duryodhana did not get since some nobilities are there in Arjuna, which is getting expressed in this form, of course in a slightly distorted manner, but it is there and that is getting expressed. So with this, Arjuna has exhausted all his arguments. And Arjuna completed his submission, completed his presentation. He gave a big presentation to Bhagavan Sri Krishna, only one, one audience, <laughs> one listener. And Bhagavan kept on listening, maybe with a smile, but he should not laugh also. So, but a little bit smile inside, he kept listening. Sometimes you have to allow the person to exhaust. Unless you allow the person to exhaust, that person will not be receptive. To make the person receptive also, you have to listen to the person. He has to empty himself out. Then only you can fill up something. If something is already there, how can you fill up? And so Bhagavan allowed. And But now, with this 46 loka, Arjuna has completed his arguments, his presentation. And he has given his, his decision. What? I would like to away, withdraw from this war, even at the cost of my life. Even I have to lose my life, I would like to withdraw. So he exhausted his arguments, so he kept quiet. Bhagavan Sri Krishna also kept quiet because this he did not find any any reason to take initiative. Because Arjuna has not asked, you give me solution. In fact, Arjuna is telling, I am very clear. Many people, when they come, no, Swamiji, I want to discuss with you about this. And they kept on telling their own options and they have already decided. Swamiji, I am planning to, you know, take a break. And uh, so I would like to take your advice. <laughs> what advice? You have already booked the ticket. It for people. And uh, then he gives arguments. Why should I take break? Why should I take this reason? Number one, two, three, four, five. Some people are like that. They give some great satsang to Swamiji and then Swamiji had a nice satsang with you. I don't know who had satsang with whom. So people have their own arguments, their own basis and they have already decided. So now Arjuna looks decided. And he kept quiet. Giving his verdict, he kept quiet. Bhagavan is kept quiet. Now, when both of them have kept quiet, like both the artists on the stage have gone to the green room, then MC has to come. So he has to come and talk about the next program. So he presents condition. What is that? 
what can happen so sanjay uvacha sanjay uvacha sanjay uvacha eva mukta arjuna sankhe eva mukta arjuna sankhe athopastha upavishat athopastha upavishat visrujya shasharam chapam visrujya shasharam chapam shoka samvigna manasah shoka samvigna manasah sanjaya uvacha when arjuna kept quiet and bhagwan has not started talking in between master of ceremony one who is reporting that sanjaya vacha told what he describes arjuna's condition eva muktva arjuna arjuna having said thus whatever he said up to 46 shloka that is referred to by the word evam arjuna having said thus upavishat he sat where sankhe in the battlefield where in the battlefield ratho pasthe on the seat of the chariot generally if a warrior has to fight he cannot sit and throw arrows he has to stand and ek phool nahi phekna hai so phool to aap phek sakte hai you know by by sitting also so arrow and therefore he standing shows his readiness whereas upavishat he sat on the seat of the chariot and visrujya shasharam chapam visrujya means having given up chapam chapam is bow shasharam along with arrow means he kept this bow and arrow aside and this bow and arrow stand for his duty so he he dropped this bow and arrow means he gave up his duty the bow and arrow are representative of the readiness for doing one's duty or duty itself means he decided to give up his duty many times in life people will get a little bit you know overwhelmed and they say i can't do this i can't do this i will run away to rishikesh but that's what people do think like that you know then after the evening they will get cooled down and again continues but once in a while their thought may come why should i do this how long i have to do this they give up sasharam chapam and was he happy about this decision was he happy about the whole situation no शोक संविग्ध मानस हिज माइंड मानस माइंड वॉज संविग्न एफ्लिक्टेड विथ सारो हिज माइंड वॉज एफ्लिक्टेड विथ सारो फ्रॉट विथ सारो एंड हि सारो स्टैंड फॉर अदर टू प्रॉब्लम एज वेल मोहा एंड रागा रागा अटैचमेंट मोहा विथ डिल्यूशन एंड शोका एंड दिस इज the picture of every samsari every ignorant person will have every now and then this problem of raga shoka and moha when swami ji very nicely said if somebody is swami ji i am samsari then he did not say swami ji i am dukhi also is <laughs> 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 samsari when dukhi will be there with a package but shoka samvigna manasa so every samsari will have this problem of raga shoka and moha but still here shoka is mentioned because every jiva wants to be free from shoka what i want to be free generally people don't say swami ji i want to be free from attachment generally people don't say swami ji i want to be free from all this shoka so much sorrow is there in my life so much problem people want to be free from problems but not the basis for the problem attachment that's why even uh, shloka very nicely says sukhasya phalam ichanti sukham na kurvanti manava people uh, sorry punyasya phalam ichanti punyam na kurvanti manava people want the result of punya but they don't do punya 
पापस्य फलं न इच्छन्ति दे डोंट वॉन्ट द रिजल्ट ऑफ पापम पापम कुर्वन्ति यत्नत बट दे डू पापम जोर से विथ सो मच सिंसियरिटी सो मच फोर्स दे डू सो एवरीबडी वॉन्ट्स टू बी फ्री फ्रॉम शोका सिंस शोका इज द इज द फोकस means the freedom from shoka is the focus of every jiva therefore here shoka samvigna manasah but we have to understand raga shoka moha samvigna manasah and everybody will have some sorrow or the other what is the nimitta the basis for sorrow what is the immediate cause for sorrow that may vary from person to person what a person is attached to may vary somebody is attached to money somebody may attached to wife somebody attached to children somebody may be attached to friend or somebody something someone so what one is attached to may vary but one is attached is not varied that is constant that is invariable every samsari will have attachment why because he finds himself to be limited he finds himself to be inadequate and therefore what happens he wants to be adequate by getting something by controlling something by possessing something and therefore what happens he gets attached to that thing and therefore as long as this adhyanam is there and adhyanam based conclusion is there this raga will be there you cannot say that swami ji now onwards i will not have naga with anything it doesn't work now onwards swami ji from 10 o'clock you know before 10 i will little bit enjoy <laughs> and 10 o'clock onwards i will not have naga you cannot wish it away it is it cannot be wished away it raga you outgrow raga you cannot throw away so arjuna is representative of all samsari and that arjuna is described shoka samvigna manasah but one good thing about arjuna is even though he is thinking that war is not good we should take sanyasa he is going to tell and now also one commentator says sanyasam eva shreyakaram iti matva upavishat means taking sanyasa is better in this situation having thought like this he sat but still arjuna did not physically run away so he sat there means in one corner of his mind there might be some doubt that perhaps you know, i may not be right because bhagwan sri krishna is not showing his concurrence he is not saying yes he is just saying <laughs> yes <laughs> yes arjuna you are such a wonderful person you should be given nobel prize for peace is <laughs> bhagwan is not telling encouraging you know when somebody is telling and we agree with that we have a different gesture and we disagree we have different gesture we have indifferent there is a different gesture Okay, so, <laughs> you tell what to do. So Arjuna must have found that his dear and well-wisher friend Sri Krishna doesn't seem to agree, and therefore he kept quiet there and sat there. That was a good thing. And with this, this chapter is concluded, and we will read this. uh the concluding part called what is called pushpika in sanskrit this concluding part om tat saditi is called pushpika english word is polokon so <laughs> funny word polokon or pushpika that we read
ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣಾರ್ಜುನ ಸಂವಾದೆ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣಾರ್ಜುನ ಸಂವಾದೆ ಅರ್ಜುನ ವಿಷಾದ ಯೋಗೋ ನಾಮ ಅರ್ಜುನ ವಿಷಾದ ಯೋಗೋ ನಾಮ ಪ್ರಥಮೋಧ್ಯಾಯ ಪ್ರಥಮೋಧ್ಯಾಯ so at the end we are remembering the lord by these three words om tat and sat bhagwan shri krishna is going to talk about these three words as the name names of the lord om tat saditi nirdeshah brahmanas trivida smritah so in this 17th chapter it will be presented so these three are the names of parmatma first name is om avati lakshati iti om so om means the lord who protects everybody and this om represents parmatma in a very comprehensive manner means his true nature and is expression based on the based on the upadi the medium of manifestation both of them both the the nature and the expression based on the medium both are represented by the word om therefore om is considered to be the greatest name that is why it is called pranavas pranuyate stuyate paramatma anena iti pranava the word by which paramatma is very well presented very well glorified is om so om is very popular then tat tat means that and that generally represent paroksha and here paroksha has got the meaning indriya agochara paramatma is not a particular visible object or at least to a devotee parmatma right now appears to be not available generally people will say upar wala parmatma what is said parmatma is above means not available locally and that idea is conveyed by tat tat means indriya gochara not available for the organs and appears to be removed that is tat and sat sat means that which is existent forever one who exists without any limit is called sat so om tat sat these are the three words referring to ishvara and why are they chanted here they are chanted as thanksgiving as an expression of gratitude because for any action to be accomplished we require prayatna effort and we require grace and since we could complete this chapter certainly there is grace in between so many factors might have come come up but still it could be completed so we thank bhagwan by chanting his name om tat sat and conventionally om tat sat words are used to mark the completion with gratitude to ishvara so in fact many uh, speakers at the end they will say om tat sat in puja swami ji used to say very nicely in one of his talks he said after some function is any karma is involved you develop some space between that action and yourself by saying om tat sat say om tat sat means what it is over let me go to the next let there not be hangover you know hangover so means there are people drink and after that the next day effect will continue there is a hangover 
Some people, those who don't drink may not know. I also did not know. Somebody told. So hangover will not be there. Say, Om Tatsat. So Om Tatsat is a mark of completion with gratitude to Ishvara. Iti Prathamo Dhyaya. Iti means thus ends the first chapter. And this first chapter where Srimad Bhagavad Gita Su in the text called Gita which is Bhagavat, which is told by Bhagavan. Here of course Bhagavan spoke very little. But the entire teaching is given by the Lord. Therefore it is called Bhagavad Gita. And what type of Bhagavan? Srimad endowed with Sri. Even though Sri is one part of the Bhaga, but still Sriyaha Pradhanya Suchanartham Punaha Nirudeshaha. So again separately mentioned. <laughs> this Sri word is mentioned separately. Even though Bhaga means glories and sixfold glories Aishwarya, Dharma, Yasha, Sri, Dana, Vairagya. So in all of them Sri is involved. But still separately mentioned Srimad Bhagavad Gita. So Srimad Bhagavad Gita in that first chapter is concluded. And this Bhagavad Gita is presenting the essence of Upanishad. Therefore, it is elevated to the status of Upanishad. Generally, the word Upanishad is used for the end portion of Vedas called Vedanta. Vedanta nama Upanishad Praman. So, the end portion of Vedas should be called Upanishad. But since Bhagavad Gita is presenting the subject matter of Upanishad, therefore it is elevated to the Upanishad status. Therefore, Upanishad Su. And plural is used, Manarthe Bhavachanam, to show the respect to Bhagavad Gita, plural is used. And how this is equal to Upanishad? Brahma Vidyayam. Because this Upanishad, uh, this Bhagavad Gita is presenting Brahma Vidya. So Upanishadva. The Upanishad status given to Bhagavad Gita is clarified by the word Brahma Vidyaya. In the knowledge of Brahman. So Bhagavad Gita can be told as Brahma Vidya because it is revealing the limitless reality called Brahman as Mansal. Yoga Shastra. This Bhagavad Gita is also Yoga Shastra. Means the scripture dealing with the preparatory means. That is Yoga Shastra. Yoga. So, Brahma Vidya is the essence of Vedanta. Yoga Shastra is essence of Karma Kanda. So, Bhagavad Gita is essence of Karma Kanda and Vedanta. Therefore, of entire Vedas. And this Bhagavad Gita is in the form of a dialogue between Sri Krishna and Arjuna. Therefore, Sri Krishna Arjuna Samvade. The dialogue. Samvada means dialogue between Sri Krishna and Arjuna. And what is the name of the chapter? Arjuna Vishade Yogo Nama. Thus ends the first chapter, Nama, called Arjuna Vishade Yoga. Generally, people think that yoga means everywhere yoga means sadhana. We have got so many yogas Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Agnana Yoga, Raj Yoga, now they have got Prema Yoga, Nada Yoga. So many yogas. Nada Yoga, Prema Yoga, then Somebody says Rudana Yoga. Well, it's just cry. What is sadhana? Cry. Rudana Yoga. So, so many yogas are there. In Bhagavad Gita, how many yogas are prescribed? 18. So, 18 yogas are prescribed. That is not... Yoga has got the meaning sadhana also. But when it is the title of the chapter, that is not the meaning. See, here, yoga means a topic. Sangati. Connection. So, Arjuna Vishada has the connection with this chapter. Or Arjuna Vishada is the topic of this chapter. Therefore, it is called Arjuna Vishada Yoga. If yoga means sadhana, then means what? The sadhana of the sadness of Arjuna. There are two, two problems. One is, one is that why sadness can be a sadhana? If sadness is sadhana, we are a great sadhaka. <laughs> Because we every now and then we have, and we don't have to do anything for that. And even if sadness is sadhana, Arjuna Vishada, how will it become sadhana for me? Isn't it? That is another problem. 
Arjuna Vishada cannot become my sadhana. It can, if at all it can become Arjuna sadhana. Therefore here, yoga does not mean sadhana. Arjuna Vishada, the sadness, sorrow of Arjuna is the topic of this chapter. Now somebody may say, Swamiji, why should we study Arjuna's sorrow? We already have our own sorrow. No. Like somebody is going to start, says, I have so many problems, I will tell you. He said, don't tell me, I already have enough. <laughs> <laughs> so why should we study somebody's sorrow? We study Arjuna's sorrow because Arjuna's sorrow led him to the discovery of truth. Since before get, getting into this problem of intense sorrow, Arjuna had a background of dharma. Arjuna had got lot of reverence, love and respect for Bhagavan Sri Krishna. And therefore, even sorrowful situation led him to getting the teaching from Bhagavan. And from that we can learn that if our life is full of dharma, then even if we get sorrow, we will not be driven to drugs and uh, alcohol. We will be driven to some shastra. We will be driven, driven to some Swami. One person nicely told me in Bangalore, he said, Swamiji, I had so many psychology, so many issues, so many problems. But instead of going to a bar, going to the bar, I went to a Swami. That was the grace. Otherwise, both options will be there at that time. To get rid of sorrow, you go for this drink, etc. Or you go to a Swami. In case of Arjuna, he went to Krishna Swami. So, there was... <laughs> And therefore, we are studying his sorrow. That how, if person has got the background of dharma, his sorrowful situation also will lead him to something great, like receiving the teaching. Therefore, we are studying Arjuna Vishada. And also we study Arjuna Vishada because Vishada is one symptom of samsara. Along with the Raga and Moha. And to feel related to the solution given, we have to analyze the problem. If you have analyzed the problem well, then only we will be able to relate to the solution. So when we understand Arjuna's sorrow, we will be able to identify. Yeah, yeah, with me also, Swamiji, every time and then it happens. I have got conflicts, my relatives are harassing. So I also feel like running away. All this, Swamiji, I really feel like I am Arjuna. So, when Arjuna's sorrow is described, you identify with Arjuna. And when you identify with Arjuna, then the teaching given to Arjuna will be found, found to be relevant. And therefore, Arjuna Vishada Yoga is there as the first chapter. So, with this, we conclude the first chapter. And from the next class, we'll have the second chapter. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamiva Vashashyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om